How's it going, folks? Happy days. We get to start the Book of Alma. My memory of Alma is just a little bit vague, but I seem to recall it was a little tiny bit more interesting. I think they even have, like, black people turning into white people because they believe in Jesus and fun stuff. Get to find out about their currency. <sighs> and it's a thirsty book, if I recall. Ah, and I'm a thirsty atheist. So... Let's get this going. Book of Alma. First chapter. Now it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, from this time forward, King Mosiah, having gone the way of all the earth, having warred the good warfare, he warred the good warfare. Is it like fighting the good fight? He warred the good warfare. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. They should, like, embroider that on a doily. <laughs> Walking uprightly before God, leaving none to reign in his stead. Nevertheless, he had established laws, and they were acknowledged by the people. Therefore, they were obliged to abide by the laws which he had made. It gets better, I promise. But I sometimes lie. Ah, it's mighty refreshing. And it came to pass that the first year of the reign of Alma in the judgment seat, there was a man brought before him to be judged, a man who was large and was noted for his much strength. And he had gone about among the people, preaching to them that which he termed to be the Word of God. You could do that? So I could, like, maybe write a bullshit book on gold, let's say? And people are going to believe it? No. No. No way. You could just say it's the word of God, huh? And that's what this uh, this guy, this unnamed guy, we'll get his name. I want to spoil the surprise. It's Nehor. <laughs> Nehor. You know what? My experience is, if the word, if if whore is anywhere in the name, it's going to be a bad guy, pretty much. Yeah, there was a knee whore, Cory whore, and I forgot all the other whores, and I usually like whores, but I don't like these whores very much. <laughs> uh, bearing down uh, against the church with his phony word of God. And God's not saying a word, although he sent an angel to straighten out Alma Jr. and the Messiah boys. Just keep sending angels, man. Oh, that was just... They're not going to do that for a while, huh? Be handy right about now. Ugh, bearing down against the church, declaring unto the people that every priest and teacher ought to become popular. And they ought not to labor with their hands, but they ought to be supported by the people. Sounds like a lot of preachers, like pretty much almost all of them. Not all of them, but a lot. Most. <clears throat> and he also testified unto the people that all mankind should be saved at the last day. Well, what do we got hell for? Just the devil and his boys? Hell's a big place. Yeah, but according to him, I guess you know, nobody's going there. All mankind should be saved 
at the last day, but he still believes in the last day. And that they need not fear nor tremble, but that they might lift up their heads and rejoice. For the Lord had created all men, and he had also redeemed all men, and in the end, all men should have eternal life. But they got a problem with that. See, the problem is, he made his bullshit up. This shit here is like, came from God. Wait, didn't he just say that his word came from God? This unnamed guy, who's really named Nehor. And it came to pass that he did teach these things so much that many did believe his words. No! That actually happens. Even so many that they began to support him and give him money. Uh, and he began to be lifted up in the pride of his heart and to wear very costly apparel. They got a problem about it. They got a real big clothes fetish. Uh, yea, and even to begin to establish a church after the manner of his preaching. He made that shit up. And it came to pass that uh, as he was going to preach to those who believed in his word, he met a man who belonged to the church of God. Yay! Even one of their teachers. They're not going to name him yet. Big drama. Although it doesn't work. And he began to contend with him sharply that he might lead away the people of the church. That unnamed Nehor guy. It gets confusing when they don't name their characters until later. Because he's doing this and then he's doing this. And, you know, and it can get confusing. What the fuck? It's taking too long. Just kidding. I just... I just wanted to pour this riff without talking over it. See, I had an ulterior motive. for a little bit. <clears throat> and he began to contend with him sharply that he might lead away the people of the church. That's Nehor. But the man withstood him, admonishing him with the words of God. Although he was saying them. But they're God's because he's got a blank check from heaven, I guess. Magic ATM card. <laughs> Look, God will stamp this later. This is the word of God. Because I'm authorized to say that. Now, the name of the man, the man, the good guy, was Gideon. The guy who failed to kill King Noah. Because he fell for that. Whoop! Don't worry. They'll name a city after him anyway, I think. I'm pretty sure they do. And we can't find it on the map either. Um, yeah, the man's name was Gideon, and it was he who was the instrument in the hands of God. Gideon the tool. In delivering the people of Limhi out of bondage. Now, because Gideon with stood him with the words of God. He was wroth with Gideon, although he hasn't been named yet. Aren't you glad I told you? And drew his sword, because he couldn't win an argument, <laughs> and began to smite him. He began to do that. 
but this is all past tense. I think he should have said smote. He began to smite him. With, uh, smite him. Now Gideon, being, being stricken with many years, therefore he was not able to withstand his blows. Therefore, he was slain by the sword. You could have just said he smote him with his sword and he died, being real old. You're writing on gold, dickhead. That pisses me off. I hate to see gold go to waste. <laughs> I might need it for my teeth. <laughs> and the man who and the man who slew him was taken by the people of the church and was brought before Alma to be judged according to the crimes which he had committed. And it came to pass that he stood before Alma and pleaded with him, uh, pleaded for him. Uh, and it came to pass that he stood before Alma and pleaded for him with much boldness. I did read that right. Thought it was me. But Alma said unto him, Behold, that's Alma Jr. The other guy's dead. Behold, this is the first time that priestcrafts, priestcraft kind of like witchcraft, without, except they can do it during the daytime, <laughs> has been introduced among this people. <clears throat> and behold, thou are not only guilty of priestcraft, but hast endeavored to enforce it by the sword. And were priestcraft to be enforced among this people, it would prove their entire destruction. It might wake God up. Don't do that. Let the old boy nap. And thou hast shed the blood of a righteous man. Yea, the blood of a righteous man. Yea, a man who has done much good among this people. And they, and were we to spare thee his blood wait spare thee his blood would come upon our uh, us for vengeance so his blood can go after you I they got this weird blood and clothes hang up getting blood on their clothes and shit that bothers them <sighs> I mean, it's a hang-up here, that's all. I mean, I'm sure nobody would like that. But, I mean, go on about it a lot. Doesn't that sound like something a murderer would be concerned with? Oh, shit. I got a drip on my shoe, like in The Name of the Rose. Great movie, Name of the Rose. Therefore, thou art condemned to die according to the law which has been given us by Mosiah, our last king. This is Alma Jr. going on. And it has been acknowledged by this people, therefore, this people must abide by the law. Tickle. And it came to pass that they took him, and his name was Nahor. Nehor. Nehor. I got it wrong. Knee whore. Doesn't that sound like a donkey with a lisp? <laughs> Knee whore! <sighs> nope. I'm okay. Knee whore. That's, that's good. <laughs> you know, my experience is anyone with a whore in their name. Yeah, he's a bad guy. And they carried him upon the, the top of the hill Manti. One of these days, I'm going to cut you.
Pizza. Sounds like the Book of Judges. I think I said that last time. Still listening to uh, Official Bootleg. And I got a good one. It's got an extra disc. It's got a second disc that's really hard to find. Saucer full of Floyd. Dream Theater. Ah. Yeah, they took him to the Hill Manti, and there he was caused, or rather did acknowledge, between the heavens and the earth, that what he had taught to the people was contrary to the Word of God. So he acknowledged, or was caused to acknowledge. You're such nice guys, gold book dudes. And there he suffered an ignominious, ignominious death. I guess they pitched him over. They don't say. Sounds like Judas in the book of Acts, where he doesn't hang himself. And Peter knows all about it. All the details. A lot of people die around St. Peter. You ever notice that? Die or get their... And he had a sword. Anyway, sorry, off topic. Yeah, ignominious, ignominious death. Therefore, this did put an end to the spreading of priestcraft through the land, for there were many uh, who loved the vain things of the world. Yeah, we hate this fucking world we live on. Because we know there's a real imaginary world that's much better. An imaginary real world. It's like imaginary, but it's actually real. It's going to happen someday. Wait for it. They love the vain things of the world. And the, they went forth preaching false doctrines. And this they did for the sake of riches and honor and Rolexes and shit. Nevertheless, they durst not lie if they were known, for if, for if it were known for fear of the law, for liars were punished. Wow. They punished liars. For liars were punished, therefore they pretended to preach according to the belief, and now the law could have no power over any man for his belief. Besides, you can twist this shit around so good. All these books, you can twist them around and make them. If you cherry pick, you put longitude and latitude on a page, and people are going to jump around and just underline shit. <sighs> and they durst not steal for fear of the law, for such were punished, neither durst they rob. Okay, I guess they're... I thought steal would cover that still. All right, fine. <laughs> Don't steal or rob. It's a little different. It's an execution. But it still involves stealing. Or, nor murder. Well, that's a form of theft, too. You steal the rest of someone's time on this planet. And that's heinous. And they needed to write that shit down. Like, we shouldn't already know that's a bad thing. I mean, even Cain was, like, covering it up, and he didn't know it was bad. He was like, I don't know, just in case. Stop bleeding up out of the ground. God's gonna see. Uh... For he that murdereth was put to death. So they they murder murderers. That'll that'll learn them good. Oh, kind of a long chapter. Ah, not that bad. 
But it came to pass that whosoever did not belong to the church of God began to persecute those that did belong to the church of God and had taken upon them the name of Christ. Guy who wasn't even shown up yet. It's about B.C. 91, Biatches. He hasn't been born yet! That makes me pray. That's verse 19. Name of Christ. Yeah. Yay! They did persecute them and afflict them, as you already said. Ugh. With all manner of words, and this because of their humility. Yeah, they're just long suffering. Because they were not proud in their own eyes, and because they did impart the word of God one with another without money and without price. Now, there was a strict law among the people of the church that there should not any man belonging to the church arrive and persecute those that did not belong to the church. And that there should be no persecution among themselves. Nevertheless, there were many among them that began to be proud. Imagine that. Putting on airs and all. And began to contend warmly with their adversaries. Warmly. It's kind of friendly right now. It hasn't gotten hostile. But it's heating up. Even unto blows. Yea, with their fists. Well, I'm glad that's how they're blowing each other. <laughs> now this was in the second year of the reign of Alma, which is about B.C. 90. Tick tock. Second year of the reign of Alma, and this was a cause of much affliction to the church. Yea, it was the cause of much trial with the church. For the hearts of many were hardened, and their names were blotted out, that they were remembered no more among the people of God. And also many withdrew themselves from among them. That sounds about normal. Now this was a great trial to those that did stand fast in the faith. Nevertheless, they were steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of God, and they bore with patience the persecution which was heaped upon them And when the priests left their labor to the to impart the word of God unto the people, the people also left their labors to hear the word of God. So it's not very efficient. And when the priests had imparted unto them the word of God, see they could have been listening while they worked. They all returned again diligently to their labors, and the priest, not esteeming himself above his hearers, for the preacher was no better than the hearer, neither was the teacher any better than the learner, and thus they were all equal, and they did all labor, every man according to his strength. And they did impart of their substance every man according to that which he had to the poor and the needy and the sick. Rip it off book, book of Acts a little more, I see. And the afflicted, and they did not wear costly apparel. Yet they were neat and comely, and thus they established the affairs of the church, and thus they began to have continual peace again, notwithstanding all their persecutions. 
And now, because of the steadiness of the church, they began to be exceeding rich, having abundance of all things whatsoever they stood in need, and abundance of flocks and herds, and fatlings of every kind, and also abundance of grain, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious things, and abundance of silk, and fine twine linen, and all manner of, of good homely cloth. Silk? Silk? Isn't that from the Orient? Isn't that... I mean, that's how Columbus discovered America, trying to find a way to get silk without going past the Arabs. You know, the Muslims and shit. There wasn't any silk here! We don't have silkworms. But they have a plague that was off... That's what it is. There was a plague on the silkworms. They all died before Columbus came. So there wasn't any more silk. And I guess it happened long enough that there wasn't any left. Silk! Of course, they got horses and elephants, too. And other... Oh, and the wheel. We got the wheel. We got chariots and shit. Ugh. And thus, in their prosperous circumstances, they did not uh, send away any who were naked. They could wear silk. Or that were hungry. Or that were athirst. Or that were sick. Or that had not been nourished. Is that with hunger? Hungry? saying the same thing again differently. And they did not set their hearts upon riches. Therefore they were liberal to all. Liberals, how about that? Both young and old, both free, both bond and free. So what, they had slaves there? I, you didn't mention slavery yet. I mean, yeah, I know the Lamanites, I guess, are enslaving them, sort of. But not individually. They're a protectorate. That means Pax Romana, sort of. So they both bond and free, both male and female, whether out of the church or in a church, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. So they'll give to anybody. And thus they did prosper and become far more wealthy than those who did not belong to their church. Those jip bags. For those who did not belong to their church did indulge themselves in sorceries and in idolatry or idleness and in babblings. You mean like speaking in tongues? Something it's brought up here? And apparently, early Mormons did, but they don't do it anymore. Because it's embarrassing, and they got enough to be embarrassed about. <laughs> and in babblings, and in envyings and strife, wearing costly apparel, being lifted up in the pride. I guess they get the silk. And their own eyes, looking pretty good in their own eyes. Lying, thieving, robbing, committing whoredoms, and murdering, and all manner of wickedness. Sounds like a list you just threw it together. How about, oh, that's right, they're writing on gold, so they have to conserve space. So they can't give us case by case. We have to be happy with these sweeping generalizations that sound like a thrown together list of naughty traits. And all manner of wickedness. Nevertheless, the law was put in force upon all those who did transgress in as much as was possible. Tell me something unloaded, you sunshine. Is this not what you expected to see? If you want to find out what's behind Dream Theater. these closed eyes, you just have to claw your way to 
and it came to pass that by thus exercising the law upon them, every man suffering according to that which he had done, they became they became more still, and durst not commit any wickedness, if it were known among the people of Nephi, until the fifth year of the reign of the judges, which we have to look forward to in chapter two of Nephi, where a little more shit happens. It picks up a little. Peace. Fuck. Out, folks. Wonderful. Whatever the fuck it is, you might be having right now.